In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let's take just a moment to call to mind our sinfulness, express our sorrow to our God, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, such confidence we have through Christ toward God not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, was so glorious that the children of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of its glory that was going to fade, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit be glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation was glorious, the ministry of righteousness will abound much more in glory. Indeed, what was endowed with glory has come to have no glory in this respect because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was going to fade was glorious, how much more will what endures be glorious? The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is, Holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Holy is the Lord our God. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. Holy is the Lord our God. From the pillar of cloud he spoke to them, they heard his decrees and the law he gave them. Holy is the Lord our God. O Lord our God, you answered them. A forgiving God you were to them, though requiting their misdeeds. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter 
will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, which commandments is Jesus talking about in today's gospel? There's hundreds of commandments in the Old Testament. Is that what he's talking about? Because he says, I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill. So is he talking about Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Leviticus? Are those the commandments he's talking about? Well, as a matter of fact, no, because if you look this text up, what you'll discover is that this is kind of the link between the Beatitudes. All these people out here are blessed. Now, here's the law, and these are the commandments. And now he's going to start the rest of this week and most of next week. We'll be looking at what are the commandments that Jesus says are the important ones. And so he'll say, well, you've heard it said, and he'll quote the commandment. And then he says, but... What I want you to do is, and then he'll tell you how Jesus, God, believes that commandment should be played out in our lives. So it's well worth looking at, if, if you don't go to daily mass, to look at those readings, or you can go to the chapter 5 of uh, Matthew's Gospel and look at, at the, from the Beatitudes to the Lord's Prayer. It's all the Sermon on the Mount. And in the Sermon on the Mount, God himself gives us his commentary on the commandments. And those are the commandments that we're supposed to be aware of. And those are the commandments we're supposed to obey. And those are the commandments that, if we don't do them, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So it's a, an invitation if you uh, are not a daily mass attendant. Just pick up your Bible. Open it to the fifth chapter of Matthew and start reading. And you'll find some interesting stuff in there about what God thinks is important. I mean, God gave us all of them. The Ten Commandments, the thousands of little bitty winds that are in those other books of the Old Testament. And yet he will focus in his own words on just those few that you'll find in Matthew's Gospel. So when you stop and say, well, wait a minute, do we have to follow all of that Old Testament stuff? And St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Corinthians, well, no, that Jesus came to give us a new covenant. And the old covenant in which those laws were very important because they showed whether you were willing to respond to the sin of Adam and Eve, which was disobedience by being obedient in the tiniest little details of life. And now, the real obedience that God asks in contravention to the sin of Adam is the big stuff that all comes down ultimately to how do we best love God and how do we best love our neighbor. And that's what uh, Paul is up to in this text today. He says, well, if you look at the Old Covenant, it had X, Y, and Z. And what did it get them? What did it get them? They were disobedient. They broke the law every time they possibly had a chance to do so. They were not faithful. God had to come back time and time and time again and to kind of rescue them from their own foolishness. And then Jesus comes along and Jesus says, I will be with you to the end of the age. That's the covenant. Jesus will be with us to the end of the age. That's why we're here. We're here because Jesus is here. We're here because Jesus is here. We're here because Jesus will be here when we say that great amen to the Eucharist. That's the covenant. God present in our lives. And Paul says, what could be greater than that? It's a whole lot better than the covenant God made with Moses and the people of Israel. And so it is. They were looking forward to God's return. 
We aren't. We know that God is here. God is with us, and God's love is always there for us. Mindful of the great commandment to love our neighbor just as much as we love our God, let's show our love of our neighbor by being aware of what they need and bringing that to almighty and loving God. And as always, let's first pray for our own universal church, that throughout the world our proclamation of the good news that God is love and God loves all creation might make a huge difference in the way people treat the world around them. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for those who are charged with the governance of peoples, that looking to the needs of, of the world around us, they might truly uh, take advantage of the bounty that God has given us to resolve some of those pressing issues. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray, too, for all those who uh, are still suffering the lingering effects of the pandemic. Uh, that through the uh, power of healing and all of those great people who work in our hospitals and, and um, rehabilitation centers and all of the places where COVID is uh, being addressed today, uh, that they might uh, bring about the healing of, the, of people, we pray to the Lord. And let's pray that uh, we won't see a big lag in the vaccination attempt. It's out there for everybody to get. We pray that they'll go and get it. We pray to the Lord. A loving and almighty God, having shared with you some of our concerns for our brothers and sisters, we hope that it will be your will to answer these and all our prayers in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread which we offer to you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us a spiritual food. Lord, may the mingling of this water and wine make us partakers in your divinity as you humbled yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine which we offer to you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us a spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me of all of my iniquities. Thank you. My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you create man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's share with those around us a sign of God's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to do what is right. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace. <laughs>